Greetings, people of God. Welcome to another Sons of God broadcast. My name is Ronald Wilkerson, and my phone number is 781-531-5430. And if you want to see my videos on YouTube, you have to go to the YouTube page and say my full name, type in my full name, which is Ronald Wilkerson, W-I-L-K-E-R-S-O-N. Um, Hebrews 11 and 6 says, Without faith, faith, without faith, it's impossible to please God, and He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Um, so I was, uh, the Lord had me on a consecration, and you know, like, what do you mean by consecration? In other words, I.E. In other words, that's what I.E. mean. In other words, a fast. So, um, so like I just stated uh, earlier. In the beginning of the video, I said that Hebrews 11 and 6 says, Without faith it's impossible to please God, and he's the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And then it's another scripture uh, uh, over there. Uh, it says, um, I hate when I go over the scriptures because I don't want to pause the video, but I want to... Um, Make sure that what I'm saying, you know, is where I'm saying it is. Um, uh, yeah. Um, uh, he's, uh, Hebrews 11, 6 says, Without faith it's impossible to please God. Let me see here. It is. I found it. It says, yeah. Uh, it says, Without faith it is impossible to please God. Please him, Father Yah. For he has, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That's Hebrews 11 and 6. Now, what's another scripture? It's, uh, oh, yeah, here it is. James 4 and 8 says, Draw nigh to Father Yah. I don't like saying God and Jesus and Lord, because those are all satanic words. From the white Roman Catholic Church. You say, why you say white Roman Catholic Church? Are you prejudiced? No. But the original peoples of all time were the Jews. And the Jews were, were the black or the Negro race of people. They were the black people. But every time you see a movie come out of Hollywood, all the, uh, the old patriarchs of the Bible, Abraham, Moses, Noah, Yahshua, who they call Jesus, which was, a, was not his real name. They're all white when they come out of Hollywood on the big screen in the movies. But in reality, they were all black. But let me get beyond that. Like I said, um, what I'm recording, uh, the reason, main reason why I began recording was so I have to keep writing notes. And I used to write so many notes. I had so many notebooks. But I'm not moving that way by the spirit anymore. But, um... Like I said, um, in the midst of my fast, you know, the, they said that in the word that he's a, a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I truly did get a reward because, um, you know, I was reading and studying it where in, the, in I, Isaiah chapter 58 talks about the fast that he has chosen to loose the bands of wickedness that set the captives free and to bring health to your body and the glory of the Lord will be your reward. And so, you know, I was just sitting here, you know, doing some studying about, uh, in this book, uh, by Watchman Nee. And he was reading um, the the, um, the um, Song of Solomon, or Song of Psalms, talking about the love that Father Yah, better known as God, has for his people. In other words, the church. How they become one as his bride. And, and in that oneness, what comes to pass is what Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter 5. Husband loves your wives, even as your own self. And to cherish her body as your own. And so, um, in John 17, 11, and 22, Jesus said that they may, probably uh, Yahshua, there we go, using that word Jesus, which is a curse word. But Yahshua, better known as Jesus, said that they may be one even as we are one. So, you know, I was reading that book that Washington Knee had um, 
I wrote called The Song of Songs or The Song of Solomon. It's where um, he was, they call uh, Jesus was the king, but Solomon was the king. And Solomon was writing a story about the Shulamite woman, who was another woman that he was going to marry. I guess he was very fond of her because he had many wives, but he spoke specifically about the Shulamite woman. But I heard some so-called preachers say that um, Solomon may not didn't know, but God, Father Yah had him writing the story about his love for the Shulamite woman, but he was really uh, not knowingly writing about the love that God had for his church. And you know, that's amazing how God can have a man doing or writing something and thinking he's doing it, writing, writing it or doing something concerning something else, but God really be leading him by the Spirit to uh, do what he's doing to send a message to his people. For example, the movie The Matrix, everything about that movie The Matrix is spiritual a message to God's people. Where we don't think that we're the one. What do you mean the one that has Christ in us, the hope of glory? But let me get back to what I'm talking about uh, over here. You know, Father Yah, better known as God, let me know that the reason why man is in the condition that they're in is because of the fall in the garden. So I was laying here, you know, praying and fasting and praying before the Lord, studying. And the Lord said, I'm going to tell you how to tell my people how they can get back the condition they had in the Garden of Eden before the fall. I was really interested in hearing that, so I rose up and, and was at attention to the Spirit of God for the received this information. So he said, read the scriptures, it's right there in the scriptures, in the book of Colossians, chapter 3. I'm going to go there and get, bear with me a minute, because I got to, I'm going to look up the scriptures so I can um, say them properly. Okay, Colossians chapter 3. It says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection, your mind, will, and emotion on the things above, not on things of the earth. For ye are dead. You hear that? It says, For ye are dead. And your life is hid with Christ in God. You hear that? It says, for ye are dead. And it says, when Christ, who is our life, appear, we appear with them in glory. So, and then uh, verse 5 of Colossians chapter 3 says, mortify therefore the deeds of your body. So, um, so we see that um, in um, uh, 2 Chronicles seven fourteen, it says, if my people which are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, I will hear from heaven and heal their land. So he said, you know, he said they're going to hear from heaven. Like in that place they call the church, they tell you that heaven is way up in the sky and the wild blue yonders. But we are the heaven that the Bible's talking about. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Anywhere Christ is, that's where heaven is. And we are the heavens that the Bible's talking about. But people don't know this because they, they, they don't study the word. First of all, in order to study the word, you have to have a concordance of the Bible to put it back into its original language. King James had the Bible um, copied into English, but it wasn't trans uh, translated from uh, Hebrew and Greek into English. So all those English words have to be looked up to find out what they mean in the Hebrew and the Greek. And you can do this by getting this big, thick book called the Concordance. Strong's Concordance of the Bible, or either Young's Concordance of the Bible. It only costs $20 at um, any Christian bookstore or Barnes & Noble. You can get it there as well. And even you can um, probably order it on Amazon. But you have to have a, a strong Concordance of the Bible and understand what those English words are saying in their original Hebrew and Greek. But let me get back to, to over here. Paul said also in Galatians 2.20, he said, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth to me. And the life I now live in the faith, I live it only by the faith of the Son of God that loved me and gave himself for me. That's Galatians 2.20. I'm not reading from no book, though. I, I know all these. The ones I state, I know them by heart. So he said, I am crucified with Christ. So you see, he's saying the same thing over there. That Romans chapter 6 says, 
Romans chapter 6 says, Know ye not as so many of you who were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death. And then it says uh, in, in, in the first upper one and two verses, he says, How can we that are dead to sin continue any longer therein? He said, why should we do this so that grace may abound? It says, God forbid. So what I'm trying to point out to you is that we're not living the life as if we are dead to sin indeed. But not only that, Hebrews 2 and 9 said, he tasted death for every man. And um, Hebrews 10 and I said, I come to do thy will, O God, to take away the first and establish the second. And 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45 and 47, it says the first man, Adam, was the living soul, but the second man was Christ, the Lord from heaven. But even though we know that the Lord, in his form of Melchizedek, you can read it about it in Genesis chapter 16 or 18, and Melchizedek was the Lord Yahshua, not Jesus, before he came through the body of Mary. So before the Jesus of Nazareth came on the scene, we still had the angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord is talking about the Lord before he came through the loins of Mary, uh, better known as uh, uh, Jesus, but he was Joshua. So what the Lord is saying that the way we approach this state of being, of being dead in Christ, that's what that revelation of the scripture is in First Thessalonians chapter 4, 16 and 17, the dead in Christ shall rise first. So when, once you realize that you're dead in Christ and that your life that you're living is not you but Christ, you're on your way to being the first ones here where you're saying, it's no more I that live, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live only by the faith of the Son of God that loved me and gave himself for me. So in Romans chapter 6, it says, reckon yourselves to be dead. In so, you know, this gave me a lot more strength in, in the midst of my consecration, in other words, fast. To, put the, to help put to death that first man who's dead already spiritually. He's dead. Our damning man is dead in the spiritual realm. And, and, and the Christ in us is the only life that we have. And the way you fortify or build up that man Christ in the book of Hebrews, it says being built up on your most holy faith. What are you building up? He ain't building up your natural man, the outer man. He's building up the inner man. And he said the way he's built up is on your most holy faith. And First Peter 1 and 11 said receiving the end of your faith, which is the salvation of your soul. Your soul man is that first Adamic man that's talking about. That's why Christ, better known as Yeshua, Jesus, was um, crucified on Calvary, or Golgotha. Both of those words mean the place of the skull when you're looking them up, those words in the uh, Strong's Concordance. And like I said, the Strong's Concordance is this big, thick book that translates those English King James words back into the Hebrew and Greek, the original uh, form of the word where you look it up. Like that word coming, uh, for example, in our language, it's more so a future tense word. But in the Hebrew and the Greek, it means to be present right now. Totally opposite. So, you know, once again, I want to just state that, you know, I had to get it on video. Usually when the Lord gave me a, a revelation that blessed my spirit, I do what they did back then. They make a monument of what the Lord had done so we can remember what the Lord has done. And refer back to it. And you know, so what the Lord is saying, that's where we get back to our state of being. Uh, where we can see what it says in Second Corinthians 3.18. It says, beholding in a mirror, that word glass being mirror, the glory of God will change into the same image from glory to glory. And the way we do that, though, is by humbling ourselves. And there's no better way to humble the flesh than by denying it food. Okay, once again, my name is Minister Ron Wilkerson, phone number 7815 31